Welcome everyone to, well, another episode of The Crazy Show. I want to talk about Parler today. P-A-R-L-E-R dot com. Not P-A-R-L-O-R dot com. That's a porn site. I know, I typed it in wrong. Anyway. I'm just saying. I got on there, I've got... 1,800 subscribers, followers, not subscribers, followers on Parler. And I can honestly say that it, it doesn't feel the same as it did when Parler was coming up and it was the most popular app and all the the conservatives were on there. It it just doesn't feel the same. I can post something and we're used to, I would have floods of comments and up likes or even some, you know, down votes, up votes, nothing, crickets. Which tells me that the 1,800 subscribers that I have are not using Parler much anymore. And I just want to say that... um, that was a dipshit move on their part. Um, and what I mean by that is why on this round world, don't mean to offend any flat earthers, but why in this round world would you ever, and I mean ever, depend on Amazon Web Services the most liberal company, and I still use them because they're convenient. And, uh, well, I just do. I don't use Facebook anymore. I shut that off because I don't like Zuckerberg. I don't trust anybody that doesn't blink. Plus, I think he's a douchebag. But the the fact is, is, and I don't like them selling my information. You're making money off my stuff. But aside from that, um, why do I think Parler's finished? And why do I think that that was a just dipshit move for them to use Amazon Web Services? Because every contract is made to be broken, folks. I don't give a damn if you got a contract or not. Neither did Amazon. And, and, And when it comes down to litigation, everything's a spreadsheet. How much does it cost? Is it going to cost us more to litigate this than it is to just not litigate this? So that's what it all boils down to. Cost. Period. And did they really think with a massive amount of Trump supporters... And them using Amazon Web Services as their as their hosting company. Did they really think that at some point this was going to come to a head and the woke Amazon Web Services was going to cancel them out and break that contract? Of course what they did was, was irreparable jam- damage to Parler. There's no doubt. And Parler eventually dropped the lawsuits. They should have been, they should have had their own backbone. They should have been using someone like AT&T or Sprint or one of those backbone providers that are considered a utility that can't shut you down. I can, it's not going to. Is and I'm a computer programmer, by the way, amateur wise. But ICANN is not going to police the internet. They have 200 countries they have to deal with. ICANN is the one that registers the domain names and etc. Uh, and and verifies all that. And but it's in their policy. They are not. I don't give a damn how woke you are. They are not going to police domain names. They're just not. 
But you have to be careful about the internet service, not the internet service providers, but your registrar companies like Network Solutions, GoDaddy. You have to be careful about their contracts. But that would have been nothing to, to overcome when it comes to your registrars. The main thing is, is get the backbone and have the pipe run in. And as long as you pay the bill, that's it. Liberals can't do a fucking thing about it. As long as you pay that bill, and especially with AT and T, if you're using them as a backbone, they're a they're a utility. They can't shut you down. Which I think it's kind of unfair between and go, going off in the weeds here. It's unfair because Comcast is not a utility or whatever, but but they are. And you know, AT and T has some regulations that others don't have on them, and I think they've been trying to get those removed over the years. But my point is, as long as you pay the bill. The one that provides your backbone, you're very unlikely to get shut down. Um, they're just not going to do that because they, well, they can't. I mean, th- those people would be in some serious jeopardy legally. Unlike a hosting company where you got their servers, you're on their platform, you're you're using their services, you're using their FTP, you're using. Whatever, if you're using Linux or Win, uh, or Unix or, or or Windows, whatever platform you're using, it's they're the ones that hold the license to it, unless it's Linux, which is free. Um, still, you're on the, you're on their physical equipment, and for this notion that well, you know, what would we do? Well, there's things you could have done. You should have been you should have been prepared for this. I mean, have thirty servers in the in the back somewhere, that and and constantly, uh, with some sort of RAID system that's constantly backing up to your own servers, or at least once a day backing them up to your own servers, even if those servers are not online, um, with anticipation of this. I saw it. I told my wife months, a month before, um. I said, I don't know who they're using. And I didn't know they were using Amazon Web Services. But I told my wife, I said, if if they're using Amazon, if they're using a, a liberal web service, they better have their own their own uh server system. Because the, or they're gonna get shut down. And sh- lo and behold, they got shut down. Um you know, I like John Mays. I thought he was a nice guy, uh, CEO of the company. And was it his fault? Who knows? I don't know the internal workings of that company. I know, according to Dan Bongino, he he's uh, he's an investor in the company. But there there should have been a, there should have, should have been some thought into that. You know, I mean, even though my podcast we host our own podcast, I don't use a hosting company. I do it in house. So. Um, you know, we're pretty much as long as we pay the bill, we're we're good to go. Now, if it get gets popular, that could run into a pop problem. You know, the downloads and the bandwidth and all that kind of shit. But at the end of the day, doesn't matter. Um, because it's kind of like I tell you what they need to do with these hosting companies if they haven't. They need to. They need to to. Um, Deem them as a utility. As long as you pay the bill, you can't shut anybody down for anything. That's just like if someone gets out of jail, gets a cell phone, and they're using AT and T or Sprint or whatever, and they're talking shit on their cell phone. You can't shut them off just because they're a murderer. You can't you can't not provide somebody power just because they've been in prison for twenty years. That's what it means to be a utility. As long as they pay the bill, you are powerless not to provide service for them and and with the internet becoming this massive money making become i wouldn't say becoming become this massive money making thing these service providers need to be deemed a utility as long as you pay the bill if something is done illegally that's for another authority to handle I mean, if you plot somebody's murder over the phone, they're not going to shut your phone service off. Now, the cops might wiretap you, catch you, indict you, and uh, 
and bind it and hold it over for trial for a conspiracy to commit murder. But the phone company is not going to shut you off. It's my point. Because they can't. And that was the whole purpose of 2 230 with your, your social media groups. It was so that they weren't liable criminally or civilly for shit that was posted on their platform. And then they just over and it more and it, you got to understand that this was passed in 1996 when you had message boards. You didn't have Facebook. You didn't have YouTube. You didn't have any of these platforms. They, they didn't exist back then. This was strictly message boards like 4chan and and the other, you know, Reddit and those. Pla- I don't even know if Reddit was around at those those times. But that was what it was for. That was what 230 was for. And so when you get into these weeds of um, when it comes to utilities versus 230 versus big tech and censorship, there's an easy fix to this. Now, big tech's not going to like it. <clears throat> um, it's an easy fix, though. And they know it's an easy fix. And they're terrified. All they would have to do is take 230, remove the, you can remove even constitutionally protected material, remove it out of 230, and put some language in there that says if you do remove it, you are now deemed and forevermore an edited platform and are not under the protections of Section 230. You give them a choice. You can do what you want. You're a private company. You choose to be an edited platform. You're going to be just like the New York Times. You're going to have to edit everything. You choose to be um, protected under 230. You simply get a court order to have it removed. Or if there's something illegal going on, you report it to the police, whether it be local or the FBI, whatever. You have these people prosecuted for the shit they do. And I'll give you an example. If I sit here and I tell you and I say, hey, you know, I think John Smith ought to have his ass whooped. That's just my opinion. That's not illegal. If I say John Smith is a, is a fag and he ought to have his ass whooped, that's not illegal either. That's protected speech. Even hate speech is free speech. Now, I don't want that. That's just I'm using this as an example now. But if I say John Smith I'm going to whoop his ass. That's a crime. It's a crime. And if I use the other acronym along with it, you know, it could be considered a hate crime, maybe a misdemeanor, but it's still a crime. It's just where it's, it's the equivalent here in Mississippi to where it's simple assault, where you put somebody in seriously in fear of seriously bodily harm or death. You don't even have to hit them, attack them, none of that. If you put somebody in, in fear of seriously bodily harm or death, you've committed a crime. Um, we have a thing in Mississippi called threats and intimidation by letter or notice, which is where you text somebody and you talk shit to them and you tell them what you're going to do and et cetera. <clears throat> and you don't even have to, that doesn't even have to work. You don't even have to intimidate them. It's all about your intentions, your threats and intimidation. Was that what you were doing at the time? And that's a crime. So you have to be very careful between free speech and, and a crime. Um, but I think unless it rises to the level of a crime, like YouTube used to have animal cruelty shit all over their platforms. I don't know if they still do or not. Those are crimes. Remove them. You know, those are crimes, YouTube. But your algorithm don't seem to give a shit unless you're a conservative and whatever. But my point being is, folks, is I saw it coming with Parler. They should have saw it coming. They should have said, wait a minute, we got to, you know, secretly, we're getting really popular here. We need to move all of our our um, data to our own servers. We need to have our own backbone. And, yeah, it would cost it would cost money, but they had some really deep pocket backers, man. There was no reason they couldn't have done this. 
Now, I don't know if John Mays just did, he just dropped the ball or if it was the board that dropped the ball, but somebody dropped the ball. I mean, little old me, I saw it coming. I saw what they were going to do. It, you start, you start, you know, hammering, 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 hammering on big tech, and you start becoming a threat to Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and all these other platforms. You, you fixing to, you fixing to rain down a world of fucking hurt. They're going to try to stomp you out. Can you blame them? I mean, really, in the world of business, can you blame them? You're a serious threat in competition. They want to control the market, and that's what they're doing. Are they violating antitrust? That's for somebody else to decide. I don't know if they're violating antitrust or not. But I do know this. These folks love power. I mean, they've removed removed a couple of my videos. I kept them on my podcast. But they've removed some of them. And the point being is, hey, you know, get your own servers. Host your own websites. It's more expensive, of course. But if you're conservative, you better use a conservative hosting platform that doesn't care what you do. If I owned a hosting platform, I wouldn't give a crap what you put on there. I just wouldn't. It wouldn't be none of my business. Um, unless what you were putting on there were, were was inherently filled with illegal stuff, you know. Because trust me, like I said before, ICANN's not going to police. They've put that out in a in a statement. They're not policing the internet. They're not even interested in doing that. So you're pretty safe with your registrars and ICANN. All you need to do is have your own backbone. And use a utility like Comcast or AT and T, um, and I, and well, not Comcast. Let me let me rephrase. Comcast is not a not a backbone. It'd be AT and T, Sprint, and I believe Verizon, may be part of that too. Anyway, leave comments down below. You probably know a lot more than I do. You probably got some programmers that'll hear this and and. Uh, have have some really good insight so you know leave leave your comments down below and and um maybe we'll start a discussion and i will say this if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so um and comment i don't take down the comments regardless if i like them or not you know just don't talk about my hair man you know i've been at least i still have hair at almost 50 that's something to say man Having a head of hair at almost 50. And I shaved my head one time. I don't have a really nice bald head. I don't. It's it's awful. Anyway, we're done for today. And I uh, hope you jo- uh, enjoyed the show. If you did, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And come on, man. Join. Join. Help me. Help me build a subscriber base. Would appreciate it. So I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.